Hi, my name is Dr. Robert McCarthy, and I'm a contributing author to this book, Energize Your Brain, Change Your Life. I want to welcome you to our video today. We're going to talk a little bit about blood sugar regulation issues and how that affects uh, your, your brain, your nervous system, and your overall health. This is something that I've been studying extensively for the past few years, and it's one of the, the bedrocks of health. If you cannot stabilize your blood sugar throughout the course of the day, you cannot get healthy. Especially if you're dealing with a chronic health condition to begin with, you need to stabilize your blood sugar. And if you do not, if this is not addressed, you will never regain your health. And the, the, this fact is something that's not portrayed to patients in traditional healthcare practitioner's office. And this is why I get up at five o'clock in the morning every day to study and to learn more so that I can share that information with you and help people who are dealing with chronic health situations actually regain their health. A friend and colleague of mine, Dr. Ed Beyer from Tinley Park, Illinois, is uh, one of the, the leaders, one of, the, one of my personal mentors as far as studying blood sugar regulation. And he just recently wrote a paper uh, dealing with blood sugar regulation issues, and he shared it with me. And that's uh, the topic that I'm going to speak on today. And the title of his paper is Gaining Energy and Losing Fat, the story behind insulin that your medical doctor won't tell you. Let's face it, everybody wants more energy, and most of us want to shed a couple of unwanted fat pounds. Today, I'm going to share with you a metabolic condition most Americans have to some degree, and this condition is called insulin resistance. Insulin resistance saps us of our energy, it increases fat production, cholesterol, triglycerides, it alters our metabolism, it can lead to type 2 diabetes, and essentially changes your entire physiology, especially your brain. What is your metabolism? Simply put, it's this. You eat food, the food gets converted into energy, that's metabolism. Once it's in your body, the food gets broken down into glucose. Glucose is the major energy source for all of our cells. Our brains consume an enormous amount of this glucose, and it's the most metabolically active organ in our, in our body. So if we have a problem with glucose metabolism, guess where it's affected first? Your brain. Is it any wonder then that the brain conditions like depression, anxiety, memory loss, Alzheimer's, dementia uh, are, are on the rise and so heavily marketed to by the pharmaceutical companies? You just need to watch the TV. You can see these commercials, antidepressants, anxiety medications um, for Alzheimer's. Okay, here's, here's how it works. You eat your food, you drink what you drink, and hopefully you absorb it. The absorption is essential for good metabolism. It gets broken down into glucose and it's sent into your bloodstream. Glucose in your blood is useless. Let me repeat, it's useless, glucose in the blood. It must get into the cells where the cells convert it into ATP, the ultimate energy source for our bodies. The conversion takes place in the cells. Outside, it's like gasoline not in the tank of a car, does you no good. But as we eat and drink, the levels of glucose in the blood rise. There's a part of the brain that senses this and signals the pancreas to secrete insulin. Insulin's job is to push the glucose into the cells where it gets converted into ATP. Everybody's happy. Now, here's where things can go wrong. The average American has glucose levels that are way too high. And I'll, I'll get into this later. There's more to it than you think. Why is that a problem, you ask? Well, now pay attention. It's crucial for your health that you understand this part. Chronically high levels of glucose equals chronically high levels of insulin. Bad news. Chronically high levels of insulin are bad, bad, bad for your body, especially bad for your brain. Why? Here, here's, here's the answers that you're not getting from your traditional healthcare provider. High levels of insulin do the following things. Number one, eventually your cells stop listening to insulin. It's like this. Pretend that you work for me. Every day you come into work and I scream and I yell at you and I scream and yell and you can't quit because you need the job. But I keep screaming and yelling. Eventually what are you going to do? You're going to tune me out and stop listening to me altogether, right? Well, that's what your body does to insulin or any hormone for that matter. When it's chronically high, it stops listening. That's insulin resistance. So what happens then? Well, glucose continues to build up in your blood and it's not getting into the cells. What happens to the energy levels of the cells? They drop. Your cells fatigue, especially brain cells. Why? They need the glucose. When they don't get it, you start to get conditions like brain fog, depression, anxiety, memory loss, lack of sleep. Sound like anyone you know? And the medical approach to this problem? Well, first they're going to wait until you're fasting blood glucose creeps up over 126, and then they give you insulin or another drug like metformin. Think about that. 
That's like me shouting at you louder and harder. It may work for a while, but then you get used to that and I have to shout even louder. You get the point? Listen, the day you go on insulin, get out a big red sharpie and circle that day on your calendar because you will never be the same. Unless, stay with me now, unless you, you get to the root cause of why the glucose is so high. So now you have the extra glucose in your blood, your body has to do something with it. Well, guess what it does? It makes the glucose into fat. Yes, fat. It's called lipogenesis. Cholesterol, triglycerides, LDLs form in your blood. What does modern medicine do now? They give you another drug, cholesterol lowering drug, a statin drug, Crestor, Lipitor, etc. Just watch the TV, they're all over the place. I'm not even going to tell you the side effects of these drugs, that's another video. But if you get muscle cramps or hands and feet burning, tingling, that's a hint. Bad news. Now, what happens when your body requires, it's forming these bad fats. You start to get a lot of energy. When you get fatigued after meals, you crave sugar, could this be why? Well, not only are you getting glucose into the cells, which causes fatigue of the cells, you're also tired from this process lipogenesis. Double whammy. Wait, it gets even better. During lipogenesis, a hormone called leptin stops working. Leptin tells your brain when you're full. You ever wonder why so many of us Americans overeat? Seriously. Your medical doctor telling you this stuff? Doubt it. He's just writing your prescription. Number two, high levels of insulin create inflammation in your body. That's right. On a blood test, inflammatory markers such as C-reactive protein, homocysteine, fibrinogen, they're going to be high. Does your MD even check these? Probably not. So now you're wondering why your spine, your back, your hips, your knees, why is everything achy all the time? Why do you keep going to your physical therapist, the chiropractor, getting adjusted over and over? It gives you temporary relief, but it doesn't fix the problem. Number three, high insulin is bad, 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 bad for your brain. It causes the pituitary to excite your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands are your stress glands. They release a hormone, very important, called cortisol. What does cortisol do? It increases your blood glucose. Can you believe this? It causes higher levels of glucose, higher levels of insulin, insulin resistance, higher levels of cortisol, blood glucose, on and on and on. You get it? Bad news. Now, here's where it gets complicated, but trust me when I tell you, you do not want high levels of cholesterol. Beyond what I've already told you, it suppresses your thyroid gland, just what you thought, right? You couldn't get any more fatigued? You can. It leads to weight gain. It suppresses your immune system. It makes you more susceptible to cold, flus, gut infections, and a lot of other bad stuff. So let's talk about what's causing all this high blood glucose. Uh, would it be nice to know so we can remove the cause and fix it rather than just dealing with symptoms? Number one, poor diet, standard American diet, sad. We all know this, but do we really? Well, we've got five rules that we have all of our patients follow in order to reduce their blood sugar levels. Stabilize them. I share these with you when we sit down and talk. Overstimulation of the adrenal glands, they will cause the cortisol and the blood glucose. What stimulates these things? Stress, emotional, physical, and chemical. Things like the poor diet. There it is again, the five specific rules. Alcohol, nicotine, caffeine. Do I need to say anything more? Food sensitivities. Have you ever been tested? You need to. If you eat a food that you're sensitive to, like gluten, dairy, soy, yeast, and egg, you can have an immune system reaction. If you don't address this, you will never, ever, ever get your blood glucose under control, period. Gut infections, bacterial, parasite, yeast, virus, these things stress your adrenal glands. Don't fix it, you're never going to get cortisol under control. Anemia, your cells don't get enough oxygen. We've got to fix that. Heavy metal toxicity, lead, mercury, iron, copper, bad news. Too much exercise. What? Well, I, I thought I was supposed to exercise. Yes, you are, but you exercise too much the wrong way, big problems. The list goes on and on, and I go over these with all of my new patients. The thyroid gland, you need to have, make sure that the thyroid panel is run properly. Tell me this, did your doctor check all of these things? I bet not, because if they did, you wouldn't be sitting here watching this video. You wouldn't be told you're normal and that everything is okay. We don't f follow the uh, lab normal ranges. We use much smaller ranges called functional norms. Um, if we use these tighter ranges, we can catch illnesses before they're way out of control. The functional range for fasting blood glucose is in between 85 and 100. We leave no stone unturned to get to the root cause of your insulin resistance. We order a complete, complete blood chemistry test, and we determine the problems based on the functional ranges. We test your adrenal glands. We test the gut. We test for food sensitivities. We remove the causes. We take you by the hand. We teach you what to do. Then we change your metabolism back to normal. 
I'll provide to you specific proven state-of-the-art nutrients for a short period of time based upon your lab work until we achieve the necessary corrective metabolic shifts. When it comes to your health, you have a choice. You can follow an insurance-driven medical system and take no responsibility for your health except make sure you're taking your pills. Or you could choose to learn the underlying reasons for your health issues and be accountable and responsible to do everything you can do to take care of yourself. It's my goal and mission to teach and empower as many people as possible to take care of their beautifully designed and amazingly resilient bodies. John 10.10 states, I have come so that they may have life and have it abundantly. If you're living life less than abundantly, call me and let me help.